So you want to learn how to have more physically intimate conversations, is yes. that right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, one of the main reasons why this is so important is because if you're having a conversation with somebody and it doesn't get physical early, then there's this weird point where at some point in the future, you've got to make things physical, and then it's like, well, how do we cross that bridge? Like, if you've been hanging out with somebody for, I don't know, four hours, and you've never physically touched them, the first time you reach out to touch them, it gets, like, really, really weird, right? Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. It's like, where you're like, hey, right? And it gets, it's weird and creepy. So you really want to be um, touching somebody earlier on in the interaction and making sure that it's flowing naturally through the conversation. The problem is most people don't understand that there is an escalation to how you're supposed to be physically touching somebody in a way that makes them feel comfortable. If you just instantly jump to grabbing someone's butt or putting your arm around their shoulder or pulling them close to you, you're going to creep people out. And also, in today's age, we live in a world of consent. You can't just go around grabbing people and groping them and doing that kind of thing. So what you really need to be doing is thinking about the correct method of how to physically escalate um, and to initiate some physical intimacy while making sure that you don't make the other person uncomfortable throughout the entire way. Now, one of the best ways is how we start conversations, which is we've got this naturally built in. You can literally handshake somebody when you first meet them, and we trigger the first thing that we need, which is hand-to-hand. -hand. Mm. Most of our human interactions start with hand-to-hand. -hand. That's the first touch that we have. Now, technically, the next thing that you'd go to after that would be uh, hand-to-shoulder where I would do something a little bit more intimate. There's the, the side hug where you put your arm around somebody. These kind of things are a natural escalation. However, I don't like doing anything that doesn't have consent. And I like to confirm that the first time that we've touched wasn't just a fluke or a one-off and that the other person's comfortable. So often after my handshake, I'll move to something like a high five. And so I'll just be like during the interaction. Now you'll see a couple of points here. When I go for a high five, I'm not reaching my hand out towards you or trying to force it on you. I'm actually raising my hand up and pointing to it. So this is an invitation for you to touch me, not for me to force myself on you. That way, if you don't feel comfortable with it, you can be like, hey, no, I don't really do that. Um, I actually have some friends that are really adverse. Uh, they call themselves germaphobes. And so they don't like touching hand to hand, and they would feel much better with a fist bump or an elbow. And remarkably, these people are OK with an arm around the shoulder because it's not touching skin. But mm. until they've showered, they don't want to be physically you know, touching another human being. And so this is why it's so important nowadays to really think about what kind of physical intimacy the other person's OK with. Now, the way that I always go about this, just like the hand high five where I point to it, I state what I am, and I allow somebody else to jump on board with it. So when I start a physical touch with somebody, I'll often say, hey, I'm a hugger. Is that OK? Um. So I state what I am, and I allow them to invite me to do the next thing or to take the next escalation. So now what I'm doing here is at each point, I'm going from the most comfortable uh, physical intimacy through to something that is a little bit more intimate, at each time judging to make sure it's OK. So um, there is a, a set sequence of steps for physical intimacy. We actually teach it in one of our programs. But what I'm going to teach you today is a simplified version of it that's easier to remember. And also, the version that I'm going to share with you goes up and down. So rather than just going in a straight line from uh, you know, where we're touching each other's hands right down to you know, where it gets really physically intimate, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about in the earlier part of the interaction how we can bounce between them to make sure the other person feels comfortable. And at all points, we're using consent to ensure that the other person's OK with it. Gotcha. So I've already shown you the, the handshake. After the handshake, we'll go to a high five. This is pretty basic stuff that anybody would be doing. But after that, I want to do something where I'm actually leading the interaction. Because what I'm looking for here is compliance. Now, we're not talking about compliance in terms of can I bend somebody to my will. We're looking for compliance in that if I invite somebody to something, do they accept? Mm. If they are um, agreeing to go along with what I'm saying, then I know that this person is willing to allow me to lead. And that's not because I'm dominating them or I'm forcing them. It's because I'm giving them an invitation to allow me to lead and asking them if they trust me. So the compliance I'm looking for is a trust-based compliance. Is this person OK with it? And the way that I'll often do that, bearing in mind that we've already, done a, we've already done a handshake and a high five, the next thing I'll do is an invitation. So I'll say to them, hey, I'm going to go and grab a drink. Or hey, I'm going to go grab some ice cream. Or hey, I'm going to move seats. Or I'm going to go out to get some fresh air. Whatever the reason is, but I'm going to look for that invitation, and then I'm going to hold out my hand. And now I'm going to use one of the most powerful phrases that I have ever learned when it comes to dating.
Mm. And it was taught to me by a very wise person, a diamond in the rough, you could say. And that phrase is, do you trust me? I have never found anything better than Disney's Aladdin as the best way to get somebody to want to come with you somewhere. Holding out your hand, it creates all the emotions that you want to see from somebody, and it gives them that moment where they get to choose. Do they trust you? Now, if you've not done anything wrong and you've had a great interaction with them and they're having fun and you've already you know, handshaked and high-fived, you've got a really good chance that they're going to take that hand and give you the compliance that you're looking for, that they trust you to lead them somewhere, and then they'll follow you. So you know, if I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go grab an ice cream next door. Would you like to come with me? And they say, yeah. And I go, OK, cool. And they don't take your hand. Do you trust me? Right, okay, well, right, right, exactly. But that's cool, because if they did say no, then I'd be like, okay, I understand. Ice cream choices can be very difficult. And so I'm not going to take the no as about my hand. I'm going to take the no about the choice for ice cream. Because if we're having a great interaction, everything's good. Remember, I'm not going to invite you to ice cream if it's not going well. So if it's going well, and then they say no, my assumption isn't that they don't want to hang out with me. Mm. My assumption is that they don't like it ice cream yeah. and it's so much better to save an interaction that way rather than taking it personal and I see so many people that they'll say that to me you know they're having a great interaction they're like I'm gonna go get some ice cream do you want to come with me and the person's like no and they're like oh this is it this is, they hate me I'm over I don't want to talk to this person anymore uh, and that's not what it's about it's about making sure like you said we're looking for physical intimacy and so I'm looking to make sure the other person enjoys doing things with me and if what I'm suggesting isn't something they want to do, then I've got to be okay with that. I've got to be willing to let that slide and let it go back. Now, if I get the compliance, if they agree to allow me to lead them somewhere, then that's often a really good sign that we can do something else, that we could go to a, another place. Now, at this point, again, I'm still really in the hand-to-hand -hand zone. I'm still playing with just hand touches. Um, but I do want to be able to take something a little bit more intimate um, and see if they're okay with it. And that would be hand to shoulder. Can I get away um, with putting my arm around them? And by can I get away with that, I mean, are they interested in it? Do they want that to happen? Um, and one of the easiest ways I'll do that is if we've moved somewhere like a bar or an ice cream place or something, um, I'll ask them what they're after. And then when they say it to me, I'm like, okay, come closer so we can do it together. And then again, you see how my arm is in the position of the shape where I'm inviting them, mm -hmm. and I'm looking to see if they're okay with it. Yeah. So once again, I'm not putting my arm around them and grabbing them, I'm just giving them, and you'll see the minute my arm went up, you lent in. Yeah. And of course you knew how to read the cue, but that's the key. Everyone knows that cue. If someone's enjoying interacting with you and I put my arm up and they move into it, I've got the situation that I want. Now there's so many ways to save face, because I've had people say, well, what if I do that and they don't do anything, and then I'm just, oh, I'm just doing a robot dance, right? That's not, <laughs> that's not fun. So instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to put my arm up, and if they don't, be like, come on, come with me. <laughs> and so I'll instantly shift it into a come with me action or something else so that I can save face a bit. But also, I've learned something there. I've learned that that person isn't willing to go to the next level with me. Do what I said about bouncing up and down the line? Yeah. I know that now I'm going to go back to the hand-to-hand -hand stuff. I know I'm going back to high fives before I move on to the next step. So once I've got them and they're willing to come in and lean in maybe while we're ordering, I know that everything's okay. The next step is the small of the back. If, if, I've held my arm up, if I've held my arm up and somebody's cuddled into me, it's usually a good sign that you can at least lower your hand to the small of the back. Yeah. Not to the butt or the hip or anything that's a little bit more sexual, but I can go for something a little bit more of a warm embrace and I can pull them close to me. So this is going to build up a lot of physical intimacy very quickly. And again, the key element is here throughout the entire point, we had, uh, we had consent in the form of uh, them physically choosing to give me compliance. Mm. At no point am I forcing them to do something, but I'm getting positive feedback that what I'm doing is acceptable and they do like it. And then that's how we can then take it further. And like I said, there's a full 12 steps and we'd be here for ages if we went through every single piece. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the key element I would say to anyone is if you want to get things to be more physically intimate, then you need to start treating them physically as if you're already in a relationship. Mm. So our goal isn't to try and see if we can sneakily stick our hand down their pants or you know, cop a feel. That's, that's not the goal. That's not what you're after. The goal is, can I take my um, physical motions and invitations and get someone to step into the relationship vibe? Mm. So, Sometimes that will be as simple as me as, as we walk into the ice cream place, I will offer up my elbow to see if they'll link arms. Because the kind of people that link arms and they walk down the road are dating. Um, and that's why I love the, the Aladdin thing where I hold up my hand to see if they'll take my hand. Because if somebody is going to take my hand when I offer it to them, then I might take that and walk hand in hand. I'll tell you something. After teaching this subject for over 13 years now, 
I have never seen a situation where one of my students holds hands with someone they're attracted to and they didn't end up making out later on that evening. Mm. There is something powerful about walking hand in hand with somebody that triggers the mental vibe of we are shifting into a relationship now and this is now a, a little bit more intimate. Mm. And so for people that are weird about like, how do I go for a first kiss or how do I take someone back to my room? I'm like, rather than thinking that far ahead, if all of our actions initially are, are hand to hand, we're doing handshakes and high fives, not hand to hand combat, obviously. But if, we're, if all of our initial interactions are that, then if I can get away with holding hands and walking somewhere, I'm already setting up that relationship vibe and it's that much easier for us to move into a relationship.